What's up guys, my name is Four Niners here today. Today I'm starting a second video on my commands for beginners. Basically a series where I teach you all about Minecraft commands and how to use them. And uh, today what we'll be talking about is, let's go ahead and press the button over here, the say, title, and tell raw. And we're also going to do an introduction to new command blocks. Basically we're going to talk about the new 1.9 command blocks which are the impulse, repeating, and chain. So um, these are pretty simple to use, but I want to teach you anyways, because a lot of you are like, wait, what the heck does this mean? Unconditional needs redstone, what? So we're going to learn about that. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is the say command. Basically, it allows you to say anything you want in chat, pretty much. So you can type in say, and then whatever you want it to say in chat, yo. So it says, miners of the 49ers, yo. And you can say, let's just say one, two, three and it'll put my name there because I'm the one saying it, one, two, three. You can do it in command block too, say, and then whatever, let's just do four, five, six. Oops, there we go, click this, four, five, six. Notice it has the at sign there, that means it's the console outputting a command. So basically, that whenever you see that, that means the command block is saying it. So, um, there you are. Now, the say command is just a simple command. You can't customize the color, whether or not it's bold. So, it's a neat little feature, but it's not the best. Next, I want to go ahead and do the tell raw command. Now, the tell raw uses uh, raw JSON. Uh, you know, tell raw. It's raw text, too. So, it uses JSON formatting. So, let's just go ahead and do a simple tell raw. Tell raw. And remember, we learned in the last video, you have at A, at P, and at R and then you got at E. We're just going to use at A for all players. Tell raw, at A, and here's how you do tell raw commands. Or any things that, this works for the title too. Basically, whenever you're doing it, you want to have it where it's in JSON form, which means anything you do has to be labeled. So uh, let's go to do just plain text. So you put two parentheses, or two quotation brackets, and text. Now after that, you're going to put a colon, and then two more, and whenever you want the text to be, you put inside there. So we're just going to say, hello, YouTube. Put a closing bracket. So this right here is what you're going to be saying. You're going to say the text is going to be, hello, YouTube. So you hit done, put a button on there, and it puts down here, you notice there's no at sign because it's raw text. Hello, YouTube. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just say we want to add a color to it. So you're going to put a comma because you want another pretty much data value to it. Now everything you put in here to customize it has to be in quotation marks. So you put color, colon, and then in another set of quotation marks, whatever you want the color to be. Let's go ahead and do red. There you are. So you notice you have text and parent or quotation marks, colon. Another set of quotation marks, hello YouTube. You have a comma because you want to add another thing to it. You have color and quotation marks, colon, and then red, whatever you want the color to be. So you hit that, click this, and now you notice it's in red. There's also many other selectors you could do. You can do things such as bold, and I believe you do that. There we are, click the button. And I don't know why bold doesn't work. I think I did something here. Let me put it in parentheses. I was told that uh, Boolean values, which is a coding thing for true or false values, don't need the quotation marks, but I'm not sure. The bold isn't working right now. I think that's a bug. So we're just going to stick with this for now. Anyways, you can do bold, you can do italics, and you can do strike through where the text is crossed out and all that. That's pretty much the simplest way I can give you the tell raw command. So it outputs raw text, and you know, you can change this to whatever, and it'll output that. The next thing I want to look at is the title command. Now the title command works just like the tell raw command, except that it's going to be a giant title, just like you saw I did before, uh, that comes across your screen. So you're going to do title, at A, see we want it to target all players. Now, here's the part that you need to learn here. You have the title, you have a subtitle, you have a clear, and you have a time, uh, timing, times, yes. And these all have their own functions. I'll just go over the title and subtitle today because I don't want to dive in too deep with the um, timing and all that. I can do the clear today too. So, going to do title at a title. 
And remember, this is going to use a raw JSON form. So basically, you want to uh, two quotation marks, colon, and then two other quotation marks for the value of something. So we're going to do text. We'll do text first. We want to have some text to output in the command block. And then whatever the text is, let's just do the coffee crafter. Let's just go ahead and try this. So we have that, the coffee crafter for the title command. Press the button, and it comes up on the entire screen. Pretty neat. So, uh, but I don't like the color. Let's go ahead and see if we can do a different color. Let's do color. And, oops, forgot that quotation mark there. And what color do we want this to be? Brown. Let's see if they have brown in here. They don't have all the colors. Like, they don't have orange for Minecraft, but, you know. Yeah, see, so they don't have brown. So let's go ahead and do uh, green. There we are. So we click this. The coffee crafter is now green. Now, here's the interesting part. The new Minecraft update has uh, 1.9, or at least the snapshots, have something called chain command blocks. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at these before we dive into the subtitle, because this is needed to learn the subtitle. Uh, basically, you have, let's go over here, we have impulse, repeating, and chain command blocks. Impulse command blocks, let's go ahead and take a look down here. You can change a command block the uh, right down here. So if I want it repeating, I do that. If I want it impulse, I do that. If I want uh, chain, you can do this. Let's go ahead and stick with impulse, though. So this is how you change the type of command block it is. Let's talk about each one. The impulse command block is like a simple, the original command block. You press it and it outputs a command and that's pretty much it. It's just normal command block. The repeating command block repeats every tick. Now at one second contains 20 ticks, so this is going to, whatever's inside here, say, one, is going to repeat every single tick. And you'll notice that my whole chat is filled up with this now because it's repeating every single time. The chain command block is activated by a repeating or an impulse command block. It you can add like a, let's go to just demonstrate this right here. The repeating com or chain command block acts as a chain, so you can put a bunch of these, and these will all activate the direction that the arrows are going. So we could go ahead and do say one say 2, say 3, say 4, and say 5, and these will all, I'll delete these, I don't want to put all that in, and these will all activate. Now, uh, whew, gotta delete this one right here. Alright, now you'll notice, if I press this, it doesn't work. Why is that? Because all chain command blocks must be activated by either a repeating or an impulse. So you can go ahead and do say go and once this one activates these ones right here will all activate all the way to the five. So we press this and looky there we have go one two three four and five. Now like I said this also works with the repeating command block. So this will keep on repeating once I set it to uh, always active. Let's go and talk about that real quick. Basically, all command blocks you'll notice right here have needs redstone and always active. A, basically, this means that this command block right here, the um, impulse command block, will only activate if it has a redstone signal inputting to it. So, if I hit always active, and I do say always, always active, it'll output... Uh, it only outputs one time is the problem. So you have there. Now if we change it to always active, it'll activate one time and it's done. It's not a repeating command block. Now with the repeating command block, you have needs redstone and you have always active. The needs redstone, it'll output, uh, it'll pretty much uh, repeat when there's a redstone signal. So it's not going to repeat 20 times a second right now, but if I give it a redstone signal, it'll keep repeating and then once the redstone signal is gone it'll stop now if I do always active it just keeps on going without a redstone signal lastly the thing I want to do is talk on is a conditional statement basically it's unconditional or conditional this pretty much takes the place of a redstone comparator which activates 
only if a command block is set like its output is true. So unconditional and conditional. This is u mostly used for repeating command blocks or chain command blocks because um you know, you want like let's just say you want this command block to only activate if this one works or this one is true. So let's just say test for at a so if this one right here is true, it'll say 1. So let's see. There we are. So if this one activates, if it finds somebody in this world, it will activate the say 1. So you click this, and it keeps saying 1 because, of course, it's a repeating command block. Let's go ahead and do an impulse. So is there someone in the world? Yep. So it says 1. So let's go ahead and do something different. Test 4 at A. And we'll get into this. Radius is equal to 1. So if it's I'm within one uh, radius of 1 around this command block, it will say 1. Or, yeah, it'll say 1. So basically, I step back here. It's not going to say 1 because this one did not activate. I was not within a 1 block radius around the command block. So, but if I step right here, it'll say 1 because I'm within 1 block of this command block. So that's what the conditional statement does. And um, so it's very, very useful. And another little note I want to put in here is that if you have one that's conditional right here, or the impulse command block will activate all these. So it, when you get to this one right here, if this one does not is not true, it will still activate this one. So let's just say it tests for at a radius is equal to 1. This is only dependent on this one, but this one is not dependent on this one. So let me go and demonstrate my point here. If I press this, it says 2. That's because this one will only say 1 if this is true, but this one will say 2 regardless of this one right here. And regardless of this one. It doesn't matter about these two. It's still getting a redstone signal, so it goes all the way down the chain and activates this one. And lastly, the always active for this right here. Basically, let's just go ahead and test, um, let's go ahead and test this out. Needs redstone, repeat, oop, no, impulse. There we are. Say go. And then right down here, we'll put needs redstone, and we'll put the, say, one. Okay? So basically, I don't want this conditional. There we go. If I click this right here, it's going to say go and say 1. But if I go ahead, say go, say 1. There we are. Looks like we got a little glitch in 1.8. Okay. Anyways, it's not working correctly because this is a buggy snapshot. It's 15W51B. But uh, the thing it's supposed to do is, when if this one is set to always active, the command inside here will output. But if it's set to not always active, it needs a redstone signal for the command inside the chain command block to activate. So basically, if I have one right here set to uh, needs redstone, and I have one right here that says say 2, set to always active, this one will not activate if there's no redstone signal next to it. But this one will, regardless of a redstone signal. And uh, that is an introduction to command blocks. Hopefully you got something out of this. Watch this video a few times to get the information you need because this is a lot of information for all these command blocks added. And um, it's very useful information, especially the chain command blocks. So that way you don't have to have like a command block. Then you have to um, have like a comparator and then another command block with a repeater and then a few more command blocks with all like redstone on top of them. This is the way you had to do it before they added the chain command blocks. It was this big. Now, you have it to where it has just this right here. And it can curve upwards too. These chain command blocks are really useful. They can curve upwards. They can go left, right. You can bend them around, make a sculpture out of them for all I care. And it will actually activate like this. But you have to make sure the arrows are facing into each other. It can't be facing right here. And then this one is right next to it. This does not work. It is going this direction, the redstone output. And this one is going this direction. So make sure you get that right. And um, that's pretty much... Let me get this up real quick.
I hate my world being all messed up. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. I remember to like this video, comment on this video for um, any suggestions you want me to do in these, and remember to subscribe to me. Thanks for watching, and my next video out will be pretty soon. Bye-bye.